right now. You're healing from trauma. So be nice to yourself or I will find you and force you to be nice to yourself. Do you need some soup while I'm on the way? A little iced coffee, a donut? Hey Bestie, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Ashley and I help people level up, become their dream self and learn how to love themselves. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, then I... If that sounds like something you might be interested in, then I super recommend clicking the subscribe button down below. Six months ago, I went through a life-changing breakup. My hair was to my belly button and I just chopped it. That's how you know that shit hurt. Now that I'm on the other side of it, I want to help you overcome yours and step into your highest self. Here are the exact seven things I did to overcome my breakup. I went no contact. I blocked him anywhere and everywhere someone could be blocked. Gmail, LinkedIn, Venmo, Nintendo friends. When I say no contact, I mean absolutely no contact. It's as if you never even met. How do you expect yourself to move on when you're still in contact with them and thus still thinking about them? No contact doesn't have to be forever if you don't want it to be, but depending on the situation and how things ended, it might be best to keep it forever. When you're going through a breakup, your emotions are heightened and it's going to be even harder to cut contact with this person, which is exactly why you should. When you're going through a breakup, you're actively rewiring your brain and depending on whether or not or to what extent the toxicity of the relationship was, you are also trying to break an addiction. I say that as someone who came out of a toxic relationship of many years and who experienced these same exact symptoms that I experienced when I was going through active SH addiction. No contact is important because this person was your safety person. Your brain recognizes them as safe and no longer having them in your life in the way that you used to is foreign to your brain. It's unknown and unknowns are considered dangerous to your brain. And that's why you're feeling the way that you do. Your brain wants to go back to what is familiar, what is comfortable, and that's why you miss them. That's why you're going through withdrawal. But you have to have self-control and remind yourself that you are safe and remember why you are going through with no contact. Going no contact is literally the same as breaking an addiction. Let's put it in simpler terms like sugar. Sugar makes you feel good. It makes you happy. It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel normal. And then you cut it out of your system. And the first couple days, it's really, really hard. And all you can do is crave it. You can't stop thinking about it, but eventually the craving goes away. And then you're like, wait, <laughs> this is actually really easy. It only took like this many weeks. And now I literally don't think about sugar and I'm fine never having it again. Same thing with no contact and your breakup. Eventually the craving and the desire to speak to them will go away, block them everywhere. And if you think, Blocking is mean. First off, it is not. And second of all, it is a boundary. And I have a video on boundaries for all of you people pleasers to watch. Blocking is revoking access. They are no longer in your life, so they no longer get to see what's going on in it. Blocking also serves as a boundary to yourself because I'm so sorry, but how embarrassingly down bad do you have to be to block them and then go out of your way to unblock them and then speak to them or not even contact them, but like just lurk on them. Just sit with that. Is that not kind of embarrassing? Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. What are we not around here? We're not embarrassing and we're not losers. By not sticking to your own boundary of keeping this person blocked and not having contact with them, that is literally disrespecting yourself as well as disrespecting the future partner that is waiting for you. Every time you lurk, Every time you break no contact, you are delaying your healing and thus delaying meeting the person that you're actually supposed to be with, that will actually meet and go above your bare minimum, that will actually treat you with respect, that will actually go out of their way to see you. When you're going no contact, I suggest creating some form of accountability. Even if that is checking in with friends and family or having someone like take your phone or change the passwords to your accounts, just something because what you're trying to do is break the craving and break the addiction. When you're still in contact with this person, you won't have the space you need in order to heal and become this new version of yourself. Number two, I understood my feelings. You need to acknowledge and accept your emotions. You need to acknowledge and accept that this fucking sucks. It doesn't feel good. Who wants to 
feel bad. Unless you're a masochist, the answer is nobody. Let yourself cry, scream, do whatever it is that you need to do to feel the emotions as much as you need to. Everything you're feeling, completely normal. You're not weird, you're not abnormal. The sadness, the loneliness, the anger, and yeah, even the hatred, as guilty as you might feel, is normal. And yeah, you also might feel some guilt. That's normal too. You're normal, sorry to say. Every single thing you feel is valid and part of the process. You're allowed to hurt, and actually you should feel that hurt in order to heal. Feeling the feels is essential, and actually healing said feels. Numbing the pain or distracting yourself isn't actually healing, it's only delaying the pain, and making it inevitably worse when you actually do decide to feel it. Or even worse, you never actually truly heal from it. So then the next time you are faced with a situation that's similar to the one you're facing that brings up these current feelings, it will make it even harder to go through that situation because you didn't just take the time and space and self-care to deal with these feelings. Do future you a favor and just deal with your shit now so that it's easier next time when you acknowledge and accept your feelings rather than burying them or distracting them. You're also giving yourself permission to feel them and heal from them. I think that is super fucking brave. I think that is so cool. And I think that is so very self-love of you. Think of emotions as messengers from your inner self. They signal what needs attention and care. And by giving them the attention and care they're asking for, you are engaging in an act of self-care and self-compassion. By allowing yourself to experience the full spectrum of emotions that comes from breakups and just any negative situation, you're releasing the power that these emotions in this situation hold over you. If you wanna go even deeper about the healing process specifically for whatever negative situation you could be facing aside from breakups, I do have a video on that. The third thing I did to overcome my breakup was focus on self-care. During a breakup, it is super easy to neglect ourselves and caring for ourselves, but this is actually the exact time that you should be taking care of yourself. Self-care isn't selfish, it's an act of self-preservation. By prioritizing your physical, emotional, and mental well-being, you are laying the foundation for your healing process. By self-care, I don't just mean indulging in luxurious activities, I mean attending to your basic needs. If you can't wash your face, use micellar water. If you have no appetite except for Taco Bell, eat the fucking Taco Bell. If you can't bring yourself to brush your teeth, use some mouthwash. If it's too difficult to wash your hair, at least just sit in the shower, literally like sit down like this with the water rushing down onto your head. The amount of times that I have done that. The white noise of the water hitting your head and going down the drain as well as the warmth is incredibly soothing and calming and serene. It's like I'm transported to my own little world where nobody can talk to me until the water runs ice cold and then I have no choice but to get out. <laughs> try to listen to your body and meet yourself where you're at, but also try to practice some self-discipline and push yourself where you can. If it's been a week and you haven't gone outside, the least you can do is just sit outside for 15 minutes. Even if you're just crying for those 15 minutes, at least you're outside and getting some fresh air. It's gonna be hard to push yourself by pushing yourself bit by bit that aids in your healing and makes you feel stronger and more confident in yourself. Healing is all about experiencing discomfort until it's comfortable again. Find activities that center you, keep you grounded, keep you present, because really that is what you are trying to do. You are just trying to remain in the present moment. The past doesn't matter because it happened and the future doesn't matter because it's gonna happen regardless. Right now, we're just trying to get you through now. Breakups are traumatizing. You just got traumatized. You are going through trauma. I personally believe that breakups are one of the most difficult, complicated situations that any human can experience. Because how is this person alive? Someone that I loved, but I can't speak to them. Breakups are so minimized in society, which only adds to how difficult they are to get through. Be kind to yourself. Be graceful with yourself. Be patient with yourself. You are actively healing from trauma right, right now. Right now, you're healing from trauma. So be nice to yourself or I will find you and force you to be nice to yourself. Do you need some soup while I'm on the way? 
a little iced coffee, a donut. Don't compare your healing journey to someone else's. Comparing your journey to someone else's only delays yours. It only makes yours so much more difficult. Just because it takes someone else three months to get over something and it's taking you six, nine, 12 months, that doesn't mean that you're not healing. It doesn't mean that you're healing too slow. It just means you're dealing with it in your own way on your own timeline. And that's the cool thing about healing. There is no deadline. There is no rule book. And also it's not linear. You are gonna find days where you are completely fine. And then you're gonna have other days where literally you are about to puke from how much you're crying that day. You're gonna go through all of it. So let yourself go through all of it. Just because you have the crying puking day right after the I feel so great day, it it doesn't minimize the good day. Just because you have a bad day still does not mean you are not healing. The fourth thing I did was lean on my support systems. You are never alone. You are so loved, you are so cherished, you are so cared for, and you are so special. The people in your life are there to support you even in your times of need. So rely on them. In the beginning of my breakup healing journey, I couldn't be alone for probably two months. I either was always on Instagram Live with my family or my best friend at the time. If I had to be alone, I would just binge watch TV or distract myself with TikTok. Eventually, I started going live less, stopped hanging out with my family as much, and I was able to be alone. That was because I leaned on my support system in the very beginning. The fifth thing I did, which was probably the most difficult part, I stopped dwelling on the past. Dwelling on the past keeps you in the past and you're not there anymore. You are here in the present moment, actively working towards a future where you're healed. Some rumination and dwelling is normal because you are in a state of denial at first and you're trying to accept it and you're trying to make sense of the situation. There comes a point where rumination and dwelling becomes excessive when you're throwing pity parties for yourself like, oh, of course they wouldn't want me. Of course they moved on to someone better. Pity parties, excessive rumination, excessive dwelling aren't productive and they actually kind of push your support system away because you're not listening to what they're saying. You're not taking the advice they're offering. And so there's only so much that they can do for you until they can't do anything for you anymore. You have to have the self-accountability and the self-awareness and the self-respect to want to grow, heal, and move on. Dwelling on what could have been or what went wrong only deters you from your healing. Instead, when you are finally at that point, shift your focus to the future and the possibilities that lie within it. The end of a relationship doesn't mean it's the end of your story. It just means it's the end of a chapter, a season. It's an opportunity for new beginnings, personal growth, exciting opportunities, and discovering what truly brings you happiness and fulfillment outside of another human being. Focusing on the future allows you to reclaim your power, your identity, and your agency of your own life. A super easy mindset shift that you can start to implement literally right now is instead of focusing on what was lost, focus on what can be gained. By implementing this mindset shift, you're opening yourself up to a world of endless possibilities. The sixth thing that I did was I started to rediscover myself or actually discovered a new version of myself because the old Ashley can't come to the phone anymore because she's dead. Makeups are the perfect opportunity to have some time for yourself and have some introspection. Take some time to reflect on who you are or who you want to be. What do you value? What do you want to get out of life? Because breakups often disrupt our routines and hobbies, this is also the perfect opportunity to try new things. For example, I started running. I actually like it. Do I do it often? No, but when I do, I feel so powerful. The post breakup glow up is a real thing. You are left alone. You are figuring out who you are. You are growing into yourself and literally transforming. Embrace it. Embrace 
all the change. The person that you were is no longer. You're about to be someone else and I'm so excited to see who that person becomes. Try to set personal goals and aspirations for yourself. These goals and aspirations will also aid in your healing journey because you have something to look forward to and something that you are actively working towards. That Self-discovery and self-development is a journey. It's okay if you are taking itty bitty steps one day at a time. What matters is that you are actively becoming someone that you are obsessed with. Be patient and compassionate with yourself as you're on this journey of self-discovery. The last thing that I did was embrace the future. Even though breakups mark the end of one chapter, they also signify the beginning of a new one. Open yourself up to any new opportunities or experiences that could arise from this breakup or after. This could be going on your first solo trip, like me, cutting your hair a length that you either never have or haven't done in a really long time, trying new hobbies, meeting new people, just figuring out who the fuck you are and doing what it takes to do so. As much as adversity sucks, it also really helps shape who you are. You just learned so many valuable lessons, whatever they may be, and now you can internalize them for yourself and take them into your next relationship. You know so much more about yourself and other people that you otherwise wouldn't have learned. This is also a great time to learn how to make yourself happy happy. Happiness doesn't depend on external circumstances like a relationship. True happiness comes from within and is cultivated through self-love, self-care, self-acceptance, and a sense of fulfillment in your own life. Whether it's a breakup or some other difficult circumstance, just remember that you are never ever alone and you are so loved and you are so cherished. I promise there is at least one other person among the billions of people on planet earth that have experienced something similar to you. Just be patient in yourself, trust yourself, and take it one day at a time. I promise there will be a day that you will come out on top. I cannot wait for that day where you are healed and so in love with yourself. You are so worthy of love and happiness and all the good things coming your way. Nobody defines your worth except you. And that concludes this week's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it this far, comment a dove emoji. If you liked what you watched and want more encouraging content throughout the week, make sure to follow on TikTok and Instagram. If you're looking to make friends all around the world who are also on a self-improvement journey, then I would also recommend joining my Discord. All my links can be found in the description linked down below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more personal growth and well-being content. Thanks again for hanging and I'll catch you again next week. Bye. Did you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Yeah, this is your YouTube, not mine. This is Gus's world. We're all just living in it. Mm, look at that face. <laughs>